Hi friends, this is Dinero Research and welcome to the part number 7 of Cryptocurrency Arbitrage Tutorial. In this video series I will show you how to build your own arbitrage bot. In the previous video we began implementation of position manager, element that is responsible for proper position sizing. So if you did not watch previous part I highly recommend you to do that before moving further. And today we will finish implementation of the first position sizing criteria, which states that position size should be less or equal to account balance. Now we are able to request account balances from Polonix and Bitfinex, and the only thing we need to do today is to put everything together. Last time we stopped at balance.js. We created balance object with one property balance matrix, and two functions. The first one, update balance, will populate balance matrix with balance information from Polonix and Bitfinex respectively, and get balance, which will pull balance information from this balance matrix. So our task for today is to implement these two functions. Let's start coding. Update balance function will make two requests to exchanges. And because Node.js is asynchronous in terms of input and output, we need callback as parameter. So let's create a parameter callback. And now we can implement function. So we have to request balance from Bitfinex, populate Bitfinex part of balance matrix, then request balance from Polonix and do the same. Because in the previous part we have created get balance functions for Bitfinex and Polonix, we can use them here. So bfx trade get balance. And here we will have callback function balance information. So let's use as data and we will work with it. Data is balance information from Bitfinex. So I think we need to trans rename this variable and call it BFX data. So now we have to transform this BFX data to fit our balance matrix requirements. So let's go to BF Bitfinex API uh, web page and look which parameters we need to take from BFX data. Here is an example of BFX data output. So basically we have to go through the array of these objects, find objects where type is equal to exchange, then we have to take currency value and use it as a key for Bitfinex part of balance matrix, and also we need to take available value and transform it from string to float. But firstly, let's create some console log message to notify users that we are requesting balance from Bitfinex. Like requesting balance from Bitfinex. And now we need some temporary variable where we will store balance information. So let's create let funds and it would be empty objects object. Now we can loop through BFX data. So for element of BFX data array we have created loop and now we need to check whether element has type exchange. So if element type equals to exchange exchange this means we have found objects which are related to our request also we need to ch check whether this object contains a field available and element available. 
So if both conditions are met, so object has it has type exchange and contains field element, that means that fund element currency equals to element available. So we take currency value from the element, from the object, assign it as a key for funds, sorry, funds, and as a value we use available. But we have to parse flow it. So parse float. Yes. Finally, we can update Bitfinex part of balance matrix. Before we do that, let's create self variable self, which equals to this. This allows us to access balance matrix from inside get balance function. And somewhere after the loop, we'll type self balance matrix. Bitfinex equals to funds. Well, we have finished Bitfinex part. Now let's work with Polonix. We can request Polonix balance in the same way we did with Bitfinex. So let's call Polo trade get balance. And here as a callback we will also have function and we'll call polo data parameter. And now we need to implement this callback function. So let's go to Polonix API web page and look how polo data looks like. Well, as you see, it is much simpler than comparing to Bitfinex. We already have currency name as a key and some balance value. So the only thing we need to do is to transform value from string to float. So firstly, let's loop through Polo data for element in Polo data. Then we'll take balance matrix Polo part, Polo, create a key which is element, in our case it is currency name, and it equals to parse float polo data and get value by key, so polo data element. Also, I think we need to make similar console log message, like in the case of Bitfinex. So to notify users that we are requesting balances from Polonix. And finally, we can print this complete balance matrix. So console log self balance matrix and here it is actually we have already implemented update balance function so we have requested balance information from Bitfinex once it is requested successfully we do the same with Polonix and then we print information and call callback function callback Okay, now let's implement the getBalance function. This function will have three arguments. The first one would be exchange. It is integer number which says which exchange we, we are working with. For instance, if it is zero, that means that we are working with Bitfinex. If it is one, we are working with Polonix. The next one is pair name. It's 
nothing to explain here. And the last one is mode, which can be sell mode or buy mode. I will explain modes later when we work with trade executions. But for now, for better understanding, I'll give you several examples to explain how this function get balance works. Let's assume that we have arbitrage opportunity on Ethereum against Bitcoin. In this case, we'll have two get balance requests. Here are some examples of them. So the first request says that we are selling Ethereum on Bitfinex because index is zero which means that getBalance function should return us Ethereum balance on Bitfinex exchange from balance matrix. The second request says that we are buying Ethereum on Polonix and as a result we will receive Bitcoin balance on Polonix from balance matrix. So basically getBalance function should take pair name, split it by half according to exchange requirements or exchange format and depending on the mode whether we are buying or selling, take left or right part of the split respectively and use this part to get balance information from balance matrix. So let's implement this function. Firstly let's create empty variable coin name coin equals to nothing for now. And now let's create several switches. Switch exchange case 0 for Bitfinex 0 and we'll return something and case 1 for Polonix where we will also return something. Inside every case we will have one more switch where we will check mode. Case buy break and case Sell. Also break. Same for another exchange. So we can simply copy this code and paste it. Okay. So let's start to work with Bitfinex buy case. When we buy other Bitfinex, we need BTC balance, which means that we need last three characters of pair name. So in this case coin will look like pair sub string last three characters. When we are selling on Bitfinex we need first three characters of pair name. So in this case we will use coin from first to the third character. Polonix case is a little bit complex. When we are buying Polonix, we need BTC balance, which means that we have to split pair name by underscore character and take left part of result. So split function will return us array and we will take uh, array element with index 0. So coin equals to pair split split by underscore character and take first element of the array. When we are selling we do the opposite, we are taking right part or array elements element with index 1. Now we have to return something. So let's begin with Bitfinex. Basically we need to take balance matrix and its Bitfinex part. So let's type this balance matrix Bitfinex. The next thing we need to take coin as 
key. Let's type coin and type to lower case because in balance matrix coin names are in lower case and but in case of trading pair names are in upper case so in order to work we need to type to lower case and this function will return us respective amount by coin name Similarly for Polonix, we can copy this row and remove the lower case because everything is in upper case in case of Polonix. Well, that's all. We have implemented get balance function. In this video, we have completed these two tasks, so now we are able to request balance from Bitfinex and from Polonix. So let's move these tasks to done tab. And actually we have almost completed implementation of the first criteria of position manager. In the next video we'll continue to work on position manager and I believe we'll finish all criteria. Thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want more videos and leave your questions in the comment section below. Bye!